Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Ozzy here. Welcome to the More Than a Pretty Face podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited today because I have a very special guest. And that's my SD bestie, Selena. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? You finally came. So excited to finally be on. I know. I'm so excited you accepted my invitation after (laughs) two years of asking. (laughs) Selena, I'm so proud of you for coming on because I know being on camera and... It's not my thing. It's not your thing. thing. And it's actually, I, I mean, it's definitely was not my thing. I can't believe I'm sitting here like doing podcasts now because I used to, I used to like not want to hear my voice on video and would not want (laughs) to see myself on camera. Like it, I've come a long way. It's impressive. I try to record a video and I think I took 40 takes. So (laughs) it's so hard to see yourself, but I I think you're going to kill it guys. She's going to be the best co-host. I'm so excited to have you on. So guys, for those of you who have not had a facial or treatment at my office with Selena, she has been my esthetician for over four years. And Selena, I remember when I first interviewed you, (laughs) you had just recently, you know, finished up esthetician school, school, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, so impressed by (laughs) your passion to learn more about you know peels and everything and anything skin treatment related and since then you've not only been my esthetician but you've also assisted me in all kinds of procedures yes, right yes yeah so coming into your office obviously that's every esthetician's goal is to work under a dermatologist get every single fact and knowledge that you could learn about skin um and that was such a great opportunity. And I have to say, it's been so beautiful watching you grow. You're you're so smart. You're so talented. You give the best facials ever. (laughs) Like I can't even get in for a facial. You're so (laughs) booked. But, you know, I'm just so proud of you, how far you've come. And you're probably one of my best assistants ever. And that's also fun. Yeah. Being able to see both sides, cosmetic and dermatology. And then taking that into my treatment room to share that with my patients. That's always fun. Yes. And I love how, you know, we go over patients. Like if there's a, you know, you have a case where, you know, you get a difficult skin condition. Mm-hmm. You're not sure if you should be doing this peel. And yes. I love how we, ru- we can run, you know, talk about these things and run things by me. Um, and I think that really is the best care that we can give to our patients. Definitely a perk of having you in the <sighs> office. If the patient's unsure, if I'm unsure... I could always just run to the next room. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) yeah. So I love that, you know, team effort. Well, since you're new to the podcast, uh, I'm going to do, I want to start off with our beauty and blemish. Usually Lacey does it. But guys, for those of you who may not know, beauty is where we talk about the best things happening in our life and our blemishes are are not so great. So I'm going to start with my beauty, which is I just got back from an overseas trip and I'm not experiencing any jet lag. It's like the first time in years where I haven't been jet lagged. <laughs> Dr. Shrazi, you're nonstop. <laughs> you could just pick up and keep going. No, but you know what it is? I think what's happened is that I have really found this protocol to minimize my jet lag. And you, know, you hear about melatonin, right? People take yeah. melatonin. I realized that you shouldn't take really high doses of melatonin. It should be, it's best. And actually there's been recent studies that have come out that said it's best used as a, like a shifter, like a phase shifter. So before, and even if you get supplements, they're like three milligrams, five milligrams of melatonin. Well, the study says you only need half a milligram, oh, wow. maybe even 0.3 milligram. So I think all these years I've been taking too much and it makes you kind of groggy and sleepy yes. the next day. So instead of using it as a sleep aid, I found like if you're traveling West to take just 0.5 milligrams and I take those gummies and I like cut it into quarters because they have so much melatonin (laughs) in them, the supplements. And I take it sort of really late if I'm traveling out west, like at midnight. And if I'm traveling east, I'll take it a little earlier at night, like 8 or 9 p.m. And that phase shifter has been really, really helpful Mm. for jet lag. Oh, that's a helpful tip. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. 
in terms of my jet lag and I'm so that's my that's my beauty my blemish okay you're not gonna believe this so (laughs) a couple of days ago in the office you know I was doing one of those big cases that I do where I treat the temples the cheeks the jawline and we do Botox like face and neck (laughs) yeah and you know it takes me a really long time really long time (laughs) and it's because I'm so OCD about the prep and, you know, icing and doing the specialized technique. And so it takes me guys like an hour at least to do this. I don't just like shove it in there. Right. No, no. Very so precise. as I'm doing this, this beautiful mom of two is like telling me about how she went to Vegas and how she, you know, you know how I get patients come and I'm like, it's like social hour when yes. they're with me. They tell me about everything and anything in their life. And she's telling me we went to Vegas and with these girls trip, but then she got like into it with one of the other girls. <laughs> she got into a fight with her oh, girlfriend. No. And so she decided to come back early a night early. Well, she comes back and she gets home. She doesn't tell her family because she, you know, it's just like a last minute thing. And she comes home and finds the husband in bed with a oh, nanny. Oh, no. I was like, no. she just drops this bomb. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. That is like. <laughs> While you're injecting her face. <laughs> I'm like, I, we've just done the temples oh, and I still no. have the cheeks and the jawline. And I'm going, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I mean, my heart just was like so broken into a thousand pieces for her and you know obviously she was distraught because she had just learned of this like it just happened like a week ago oh my goodness and I just saw the nanny in the office like three weeks ago (laughs) I'm going what that's such a small world it's such a small world well you know I see like I see the the mom the dad the you know the husband the girlfriends the you know I usually when I see a patient I see like their whole family and like their whole circle and you know, I have a, I've developed a special relationship with all my patients now I've been practiced for, you know, 15 years. And so you really get to know your patients. So when they come in and they know whatever they tell me stays, stays in that room, yes. right? Yes. Because of HIPAA and happens in the room, stays regulations, in the room. right? Exactly. <laughs> what, sta- what, what happens in the room stays in the room. But so I have this philosophy of sort of treating the whole patient, right? Mm-hmm. And not just treating their skin condition or you know, helping restore their jawline or their cheeks or whatnot. But really, when I see patients, I'm, I'm really looking at the whole patient, their personality, where they are in life, what they really need. And, and along comes with that, you know, psychodermatology. Yes. Have you heard of that? <laughs> I have not heard of that. It's, it's, it's a thing and people are, are starting to talk about it. Now, my question for you is, do you have similar relationships with your clients it's so funny because I think all the girls that walk by my room tell me how loud my patients are and am I supposed to not talk during my facial or are you supposed to talk to your esthetician during your facial I was like my patients never stop talking (laughs) and it's the best thing that is their time to zone out that's right and and just spell it out (laughs) and you're right some people don't say a word right they come in and they're just like meditating or whatnot but yes there are a lot of people that tell us things Mm -hmm. that they don't tell anyone and we're sort of become their their therapist therapist for that hour (laughs) for that hour and I think that is the beauty of treating the patient as a whole as opposed to just treating their skin concerns. Their skin concerns, right? And you know, when I am working with the patient on treatment, I really want to get to know them. What kind of person are they? Because some people want to do, you know, the most invasive, the most intense treatment and they don't care about the downtime, this and that. Other people, you have to take baby steps. So really you have to get to know them as a person, their, you know, entire sort of being. And it's very rewarding. You know, a lot of people say, well, what, you know, my mom tells me this. She's like, you're not, why aren't you going out to parties? You know, you get invited (laughs) to all these things and you never go. And I'm like, mom, you don't understand. My whole day is one big party. Oh yeah. Right. Like every person that comes in, yeah, you catch up (laughs) with patients, you socialize all day. It is. It's a very social environment. (laughs) Yeah. And so I think it's, um, it's really special to have that relationship with patients. But anyway, (laughs) that was my, that was my morning. It was, it was hard to recover from that. (laughs) (laughs) I could imagine. I could only imagine. 
Okay, that was a lot. I just shared a lot. So what is your beauty? Do you have one you want to share? My beauty is obviously being invited on this show. I'm so <laughs> excited to finally sit down with Dr. Ozzy on More Than a Pretty Face podcast. So that would be my beauty for this week. Oh, you're the best. I'm so honored for, to have you on. And blemishes. Um, it's hard to choose just one. <laughs> oh, this Why? summer been has rough? been a fun one. People Aww. are at home spending more time at, in the mirror looking at their skincare and trying different peels, putting together different products. Um, we had one patient who came to me with a burn on her face oh, after getting yes. waxed yes. and she's been on retinol. Oh, so that was, a, that was a learning lesson for both of us. Yes. That because always she's, consult. She's the one that was on like really strong prescription Retin-A, right? Yes. And she And a lot of our patients are her, on Retin-A. A lot of, yeah, a lot of our patients are so on Retin-A. So one she, thing, yes, exactly. When you're going to get waxed, your esthetician should ask if you're on, on any exfoliants, any retinols, Retin-A. Yeah, you always do that, I right? do. Yeah, exactly. what, are, what is your protocol? What do you tell them? Well, it's it's a good gateway also into asking about their skincare. Mm-hmm. So knowing what kind of skincare they're on, what their skin can tolerate if they do have more sensitive skin or if they are on having retinized skin at that time. So it's good to kind of gauge that person and what their skin needs and kind of customize different levels. Well, you just not not just Retin A, but what about like exfoliants, right? Oh, like glycolic, salicylic mm-hmm. acid. Those are pretty powerful exfoliants. And, you know, if you're on those and you get waxed, you're going to get potential side effects like a burn, a reaction. It could potentially even like take your skin off, right? Because when you're on those things, your stratum corneum or that dead layer of skin, that outer skin layer is is gone. And so you can create a deeper wound uh, really quickly with not just waxing, but what about like chemical peels, right? Exactly. Chemical peels as well. Your skin barrier is just compromised. It's more prone to having more adverse reactions just because we did a strong treatment. We right. did a strong peel. Right. And so. I, and recently you were telling me, you were talking about that case, right? Well, oh, why don't you tell everyone see, about the case? there we go. Another who, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell, we us, had, <laughs> tell us about that one. We had somebody who came in that did the microneedling. Uh-huh. And then on top of the microneedling, did a chemical peel. Oh, yes. And this, she did this at home, right? She did this at home, at oh. home treatment plan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> None <geez>. of us <laughs> had any Probably some TikToker that did this and said, if you want glass skin, if you uh, want, you know, all those little trends. layer on these treatments. Whatever yes. they can do to get their skin perfect, they will just do it all. I, I don't think people realize the skin is a real organ, it actually. Is. It's like a high-functioning natural organ and it should be treated as such because it's not plastic it's not like you can just layer stuff on it and you know nothing happens to it eventually you're going to disrupt your skin barrier and 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 it's your face and why would you go to anybody else other than a professional (laughs) right yeah there's you know I get it some people want to do microneedling and and, and some people do well with that at home no judgment right but you should really be cautious uh, in terms of where you get your information from. If it's a TikToker or online influencer is telling you about this, you know, check with your dermatologist, with your esthetician, run it by them, see what their thoughts are. You might just save yourself, you know, a lot of hassle in terms of now we're trying to help her yes. with her skin mm-hmm. because now she's got, you know, hyperpigmentation, yes. you know, she's got unevenness, you know, potentially a scar a wound we're trying to heal so that it doesn't scar but what happens with microneedling is that you disrupt your skin barrier right so you open up your skin and when you treat it with a peel right after what happens is you have no control of how deep that peel is going to go even if it says like at home peel it's a superficial peel yes right what happens to that peel when you microneedle it just penetrates deeper and then you have no idea of it's no longer (laughs) that's right it's no longer a light peel it's like a deep peel and it's going to be uneven right part of you know, the application of peels is you want a nice, even peel. You don't want some areas to be really deep and some areas to be superficial. That's how you get unevenness. And so that's what you risk when you do microneedling. Your channels are open and you're going to get unevenness and 
potential, you know, problems. Yeah. All right, guys, this is a great opportunity to remind you, you can get a free $25 gift card for Aussie MD skincare online just for submitting your glowing selfie. Click the share your story button on the slide on the main page of AussieMDSkincare.com. Fill out the form and send us photos of your before and after. You can also fill the form out by scrolling down to the bottom of the website and click share your skincare story under helpful links. When you submit your form and it's approved, you'll get a $25 gift card. So spend it however way your heart desires at AussieMDSkincare.com. Again, look for share your skincare story to get started. So it's been rough for you. Yeah, it's been fun. It's so been fun for, for both of us. <laughs> so for the audiences, if you're going to get waxed or a chemical peel, what do you tell them? What are the do's and don'ts? Like what are the things you tell them not to do? No exfoliation for at least five to seven days prior, mm -hmm. just so your skin can rebuild that kind of compromised skin. And then I would also say five to seven days after, try to avoid any exfoliation just because that is again, more compromised skin. So you want to have that good foundation before introducing your actives. Right. And so it's important to be on a, a you know, a good skincare regimen before, make sure you have this strong skin barrier, mm -hmm. right? Because if we're going to disrupt your skin barrier with, you know, microneedling or a chemical peel, we want you to have that ability to really, you know, regenerate your skin and heal from it. What about sun? What do you tell them in terms of sun exposure? For me, just because I do mostly kind of superficial in-office treatments, that it is just fine. But if we do plan on doing something like a peel or something more invasive than two weeks, just because we don't know how aggressive that may affect your Right. And so superficial peels, I think you, you could wear sunscreen, right? Yes. Just wear a hat. And we know you can't stop living your life. So you can still go out. Yes. It's not like people think... Well, I'm doing a chemical peel. I have to like stay indoors, shut my blinds for a week. <laughs> I can't see any light. Well, in an ideal dermatologist world, yes, but that's not going to happen. Especially so, in San Diego. <laughs> especially in San Diego where it's nice literally year round. So I think that's a good protocol where you can wear sunscreen, hats. But yeah, try to be out of direct, direct sun, sun, right, yes. for a week or so. Well, that's that's great. I, um, I think those are really helpful tips. What about... Um, peels. Let's get into that because sure. that's one of your passions, yes, right? Yes. I and I think we have a peels. question coming up on peels. Yes. So I thought guys, we're going to reverse roles here. I'm going to be the one asking the questions and Selena, you're going to be the one answering them. But you know, I always want to chime in like I always <laughs> do. So don't, don't be hesitant to use the word Kentucky, oh, <laughs> Kentucky. when I need to stop talking because I've gone, I've said a little too much. I need to like stop talking. <laughs> okay. So let's jump into it. Hi, Dr. Ozzy. I have darker skin. I am Middle Eastern, but I would like to get a peel. Can you tell me if this is safe for me to do? Well, let's see what my esthetician would say. That's a great question. What we love about chemical peels is that they generally are safe for all skin types mm -hmm. um, and skin concerns. There's different peels that address different things. Um, we just did one on our MA. Uh -huh. We did our Skin Bright Peel and she is fair skin but has melasma and it was the best thing for her. Her yeah, skin, it looks like a glazed donut. She, I call her a porcelain doll <laughs> after her does. peel. <laughs> her skin looks so tight and so shiny good. and so bright. <laughs> and all the patients are like, what did you do to your yeah, skin? It looks so good. But for darker skin tones, I would say chemical peels generally are safe depending. Right. So superficial chemical peels are one of the safest things for darker skin. Now it really depends on the ingredients yes. and how the peel is performed, right? Because we can take a superficial peel and make it super aggressive, or we can take a superficial peel and make it very superficial and very mild. It just depends on, mm -hmm. you know, with the patient's condition, if it's the first treatment, certainly want to be more conservative. But I think going to somebody with a lot of experience in peels uh, can be a safe, wonderful treatment, particularly when lasers, on the other hand, can be a lot more risky in darker skin because yes. light can cause you know, hyperpigmentation. And uh, although, you know, with lasers, sometimes you have a little bit more control, but 
in the summer when you have a tan, there's a lot of lasers that can cause problems. So I think a superficial chemical peel. I do have been loving the, the Skin Bright. The Skin Bright. Yeah, yes, people, people have been loving, loving that. It. We have that for our melasma program with and for our darker skin patients because of the ingredients. It has kojic acid and it has a strong retinol in it. And you get some peeling, right? But not like... Not wounds she, or so, you know yes. <laughs> have you seen that sex in the city episode oh my goodness <laughs> where samantha goes and gets her chemical yeah feel. she's like oh it's just a lunchtime <laughs> feel and she goes and comes back oh, to that party my gosh and her face, face is like raw <laughs> and red and i hope that you guys don't have that image of a chemical peel in your in your mind it's Tell that's us, not the case yes i feel that's everyone's kind of fear is oh i I don't want my face to look raw. I don't want to <laughs> peel for weeks. Right. And that's typically not the case. Not the case. No. So tell us about what they can expect. For example, from the Skin Bright peel, which is a superficial peel. Yeah. Uh, tell us what, what they can expect. The day of, you definitely have a peel glow. So mm -hmm. you leave the office and your skin looks nice and bright. I'd say over the course of the two or three days, that's when the skin starts to lift. Um, and that lifting isn't always the prettiest, <laughs> but <laughs> you kind of push through it. Um, it could be mild. So we could do a milder version of that peel absolutely. and where you just have a little bit, it looks like a little dry skin, particularly yes. around your mouth. Or you could look like a lizard where you're like shedding sheets, sheets yeah. of skin. <laughs> right. And for those people that look like lizards that have like sheets coming up don't peel, don't peel. the yes. sheets right what are you supposed to do selena just trim them trim them trim with them. a little scissor yes. right yeah so when does when do you see that glow from that chemical peel about everyone what? varies and depending on how deep we go with the peel but i would say about a week yeah a week to 10 days yeah. is when you really start to see that and appreciate that good appreciate <laughs> new that fresh new skin. fresh skin underneath that you should be protecting with SPF, yes. right? Oh, yes. So then all your treatment is kind of reversed if you don't. Yeah, you got to protect your investment. I always exactly. say, you know, you spent money doing a peel. Don't just get right back out in the sun and and without any sun protection. Yeah. I personally I can't wait to do this peel. I haven't done it yet myself, but it is one of my favorites. Another one for darker skin that you can look into would be uh, there is the V peel. There is the... Um, Cosmolon peel. There's also Jesner's good old Jesner's peel. You yes. know, it's it's a classic. It's tried for, and true. <laughs> tried and true. Great works for for acne, for hyperpigmentation, and it's one of the least inflammatory peels. And so that's a great one. And then there's one that I'm blanking on the name. It's not the V peel, but what is another one that's good for the perfect peel? Perfect peel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, the perfect peel. <laughs> And that, those are all safe for darker skin. So if you're suffering from acne, hyperpigmentation, or you just want kind of a nice glow to your skin, yes, those are good love ones. love chemical peels. That's right. All right, Selena, we have covered so much in this episode. I think we should break it up into two episodes. So guys, check back with us on episode two next week as we continue to answer your questions and talk about double cleansing and more on those pesky little bumps called milia, how you get rid of them. Can't wait for this next episode.